45 years ago, Apollo 8 astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders became the first humans to orbit the moon and the first to witness the magnificent sight called Earthrise. Now, for the first time, we can see this historic event exactly as the astronauts saw it, thanks to new data from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO. LRO's superb global lunar maps, combined with the astronauts' own photographs, reveal where Apollo 8 was over the moon, and even its precise orientation in space, when the astronauts first saw the Earth rising above the moon's barren horizon. On December 24, 1968, a few minutes after 10.30 a.m. Houston time, Apollo 8 was coming around from the far side of the moon for the fourth time. Mission Commander Frank Borman was in the left-hand seat, preparing to turn the spacecraft to a new orientation according to the flight plan. Navigator Jim Lovell was in the spacecraft's lower equipment bay, about to make sightings on lunar landmarks with the onboard sextant. And Bill Anders was in the right-hand seat, observing the moon through his side window and taking pictures with a Hasselblad still camera fitted with a 250mm telephoto lens. Meanwhile, a second Hasselblad with an 80mm lens was mounted in Borman's front-facing window, the so-called rendezvous window, photographing the moon on an automatic timer, a new picture every 20 seconds. These photographs, matched with LRO's high-resolution terrain maps, show that Borman was still turning Apollo 8 when the Earth appeared. It was only because of the timing of this rotation that the Earthrise, which had happened on Apollo 8's three previous orbits but was unseen by the astronauts, now came into view in Bill Anders' side window. Here's what it looked like, as recreated from LRO data by Goddard's Scientific Visualization Studio. You'll hear the astronauts' voices as captured by Apollo 8's onboard tape recorder, beginning with Frank Borman announcing the start of the roll maneuver. And you'll see the rising Earth move from one window to another as Apollo 8 turns. All right, we're going to roll. Ready? Set. The impact crater with uh, at uh, just prior to the subsolar point on the south side and the floor of it, uh, nearly even if there is one dark hole. But I couldn't get a quick enough look at it to see if it might be anything volcanic. Yeah, look at that picture over there. There's the earth coming up. Wow, is that pretty? Hey, don't take that. It's not scheduled. <laughs> you got a color film, Jim? Hand me a roll of color quick. Oh, man, that's color. Where is it? Quick. It's out here. Just grab me a color. A color exterior. Yeah. Got one? Yeah, I'm looking for one. C-368. Anything, quick. Here. Okay. I think we missed it. I've got it right here. That's, let me get up this way. A lot clearer. Bill, I got a phrase that's very clear right here. You got it? Yep. Let's take several of them. several of them. Here, give it to me. Wait a minute. Let me just get the right setting here. Just calm, down. calm down, level. Oh, I got it right Oh, that's a beautiful shot. 250 at F11. Uh, 
Oh, very, very explosional. I did. I picked you up there. You sure you got it now? Yeah, we'll get, we'll get him come up again, I think. For the astronauts, seeing the Earth rise was an unexpected and electrifying experience. And one of the three photographs taken by Bill Anders became an iconic image of the 20th century. But as we've just seen and heard, that photograph was actually a group effort. Not just because Jim Lovell found the role of color film and gave it to Anders, but because the astronauts wouldn't have seen the Earth if Frank Borman hadn't been turning the spacecraft just as it was coming up. Today, the Earthrise has become a symbol of one of history's greatest explorations, when humans first journeyed to another world and then, looking back, saw their home planet, in Lovell's words, as a grand oasis in the vastness of space. I'm Andrew Chaikin, author of A Man on the Moon.